right is the is the YouTube up or should we should we wait? I think we're live, yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this open meeting of the Science and Engineering Policy Committee of the National Science Board. I'm Maureen Kondek, the chair of the committee on national s &E policy, and Suresh Babu, our committee vice chair, is our committee vice chair. Let's start by taking uh, roll call. So Suresh Babu, Aaron Dominguez, Suresh Garamella. Here. Mel Huff. Matt Malkin. Here. Julia Phillips. Here. Do we have any other uh, members on the phone today? Dave Scott Reese with you. Yep. Scott sorry. and Steve. Yep. Scott yes. and Steve. <laughs> Very good. Um, and I, I believe I'm seeing Dario as well. Yep, Dario Higgill here. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, so this is our fifth narrative outline telecon for this cycle. Uh, so committee members should already be quite familiar with the procedure. For members of the public watching today, Indicators is prepared under the guidance of uh, the board by the National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics or NCSCS, an independent federal statistical agency located within the NSF. We're glad as always to be working so collaboratively with, with our NCSCS colleagues. The staff here have sent us an outline in the form of a draft narrative outline that summarizes the topics, the data sources, and the substantive changes from the 2022 edition, if any exist, um, that the authors have planned. So as a reminder about this meeting, our consideration of the outline today is a major opportunity for NSB members to shape the content of the report. Board input and suggestions that are provided at this point in the process will have the most impact and will be the most helpful for our NCSCS colleagues. Uh, we will vote on the outline today at the end of our discussion. NCSCS has also shared a list of uh, report reviewers, suggested reviewers. So if you have any suggestions for the reviewers list, such as uh, people who might add an additional perspective or topic areas of expertise, please don't hesitate to email that information to me and Suresh Babu, copying to Amanda. We will share your suggestions with NCSES as they finalize the reviewer list uh, in their broader process to ensure a balanced coverage uh, of each report's topic areas. So today we're going to hear from the SEI author describing her plans for the thematic report, uh, Invention, Knowledge, Transfer, and Innovation. Following the presentation by the report authors, the lead reviewer, Dario Gill, will start the discussion, and then we will open it up to the rest of the reviewers on the call to uh, allow for discussion with the authors. At the end of the discussion, if we have a quorum of the committee, we will have a vote of the committee on approval of the narrative outline subject to any input that we may have given the authors today. So please note that only SEP committee members can vote on approval. So does anyone have any questions before we get started? Hearing none, I'm going to uh, turn the floor over to report author, Carol Robbins. Uh, as I mentioned, the lead reviewer for the report is Dario and additional board reviewers are Suresh Babu, who could not be present for this call and, uh, and Roger. So uh, Carol. All right, thank you, Maureen. I'm going to begin with an overview covering the purpose of the report and notable changes since last publication. I will then discuss each of the topics listed on the slide in more detail. The report's purpose is to provide an overview for assessing the US and global science and engineering enterprise through three dimensions of activity, invention, knowledge transfer, and innovation. Each topic is explored through indicators organized by sector, for example, business, universities, federal government. Significant changes from the 2022 report are enhanced coverage of federal agency activities and some topic consolidation to streamline the report. Through the use of a simpler measure of international patenting that is readily available, we are able to reduce by 35 the number of supplemental tables. For those of you who have reviewed, reviewed earlier publications, you know that we have more than 100. Whoa, okay. 
New sidebars will address the topics of emerging technologies and of climate change mitigation technologies and the 2022 sidebars on international collaboration in open source software and federal contributions to COVID-19 research will be excluded. I will now discuss the components of the report in more detail, focusing on each of the topics listed on the slide. Can everyone see the slide? I believe, I believe it's been taken down. Amy, honey, can, I mean, Amy, can we put up the slide? Yes, I'm having technical issues. I'll put it up right now. Sorry. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Yes, just keep going. I apologize. That's fine. Okay, no, no. I'm going to discuss each of the components in more detail, focusing on each of the topics listed. In invention indicators illustrate current trends in invention across time, technology, performers, and geography through utility patent data. Trends in the geography of US, US innovation are visualized through county level maps and other figures. International patenting trends will report patents across countries and economies at the technology level based on priority patents. This year, the report will highlight the topic of international utility patents in different subfields of artificial intelligence technologies. The source for identifying these topics is the Association for Computing Machinery and has been used by others, including the World Intellectual Property Organization. Demographic coverage will include gender of inventors and characteristics such as field of technology and country. Primary data sources for this section are the Patents View database from the United States Patent and Trademark Office and the PatStat database from the European Patent Office, as well as National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics Business Survey data. Data on women inventors will come from analyses from the U.S. Patent and Technology Office and the World Intellectual Property Office. The topics in the next section, knowledge transfer, have been reorganized for 2024. We will now start with trends in the number of new firms created in the United States. University technology transfer activities include startups based on university created technology, along with other indicators and analysis of funding for the small business innovation research and small, small business technology transfer programs. Federal agency activities will incorporate more current data from individual agency technology transfer reports and from a new tech and tabulation of agency utility patents. To the extent that the data are available, the federal role in citizen science and in sharing open source software will be included. This section of the report will present trend data on research collaborations in peer reviewed publications and also present trends in the citations to peer reviewed publications and patents. Both topics are analyzed at the level of universities, federal government, business and foreign sectors. The final section of the report, innovation indicators has been reorganized to emphasize data that illustrate the US geography of innovation. Trademark trends are analyzed by year, geography and 10 product areas. As in the invention section of the report, maps will show county level trends in trademark registration and link to the public use file for annual USPTO trademark registrations by US counties. The number and characteristics of firms introducing new products or processes each year based on business survey data collected by NCSES and the US Census Bureau are shown at the industry level. For activities outside of the business sector, the report will include innovation activities in government, university, and households as the more limited data in these areas allow. Venture capital, an important source of funding for innovation, will be the final topic for the report, covering trends in domestic and international venture capital. Venture capital data are from the proprietary database PitchBook. Two sidebars are planned. One will explain various approaches currently being used to identify emerging technologies by federal agency and by researchers. The second sidebar will present trends in USPTO utility patents that address climate change mitigation technologies relevant to agriculture and forestry. 
using a classification from the European Patent Office and the United Nations Environmental Program. 35 supplemental tables will be able to be eliminated because of the change in data sources for international patents, the 2022 sidebar on collaborations in open source software, and the sidebar on the development of COVID-19 will not appear in 2024. Similarly, table INV24, which shows contributions of federal agencies to open source software, will be replaced with information from the federal website code.gov. Tentative dissemination date is January of 2024. Thank you. I welcome your comments and questions on the outline. Carol, thank you so much for that very clear and very uh, concise uh, summary of the important elements of this thematic report. Uh, I'm going to turn the discussion over now to Dario, who will open the floor for, who will provide his own comments and then open the floor for discussion and questions. Dario. Thank you so much, uh, Maureen, and thank you, Carol, uh, for a very nice overview of, of the report. I guess uh, I have the first question and then I'll open up very quickly. And that is in relation to open source. Uh, you mentioned some of the removals of it, but I, I just wanted to have an opportunity to discuss a little bit more broadly because you know one of the biggest trends happening, of course, in the world of you know science and um, is the contributions of open source and open science technologies around that um, and the impact that this is having in knowledge transfer and innovation, right? And and I don't know if we cover this in other areas, uh, you know, of of all the reports, but I wonder if you could comment on you know, that decision to remove it uh, and how much emphasis or where else could we cover the role of open uh, source that is having a knowledge transfer um, for, you know, for scientists uh, and engineers all over the world? Thank you for that question, Dario. I actually agree with you that this is really a critical area. We had the opportunity to present the data that you saw in 2022 because of a five-year research program that we had with the University of Virginia. And we had the great opportunity to work with a lot of young researchers who are both data scientists and economists. It was a five-year research program and it came to an end last year, which is why we don't have new data. What we've been able to do is to look at what is publicly available from opensource.com and that's where we're going to include it. My hope is that in the future, there will be a way to reinvigorate this research program. But at the current moment, that is not where we are right now. We don't, uh, we don't have the program to collect the data. Okay, so I wonder if that's uh, an action, I mean, or is there any action that the board needs to take or provide feedback back to uh, encouraging those kinds of research activities to make sure that it happens. I mean, I just to close on this, my personal view around that is, is that the, that role of open source is going to be of such massive importance. It's, it may dwarf even the importance of patents, right? Uh, in uh, in some of the most dynamic fields in in uh, in technology like AI, as an example. So maybe Amy, you can address whether this is something we can address in the future because again, this was a research project. We were able to bring the data out, and I actually think that. Um, this, this I, I agree with you about the importance of this area, but finding a way to fund this has not been something. Amy, why don't you address? Well, that? I mean, it's not. Yeah, it it it's something we're always looking at uh, new uh, ways to gather data and new indicators, and so um, this was a um, an exploratory exercise, and um, we're definitely always uh, when we come to the end of things, kind of thinking, okay, now how can we? Uh, continue this long term. So we're in the process of exploring um, what we're going to continue and how we're going to pursue that. So we will, um, but it will not be available for this particular indicator cycle. Yeah, I understand um, it's too late to do it for 2024, but, um, but I just want to make sure we don't drop the ball of if, if there are actions that we need to take now, setting, such that in the future indicators, this is possible. I guess that's my question. What should we be doing to make sure that it could be ready for the future? Uh, yeah. I, okay. If I could add to that, just to broaden that, but this, uh, this is Roger. The, the whole impacts of, of cost controls and pharma also on, on innovation. 
is one that will continue to to grow. I mean, as we as we seek to to limit expenses in biomedical applications in drugs and so forth, the uh, the, the impact on uh, that's claimed by the biotechnology industry organization is that this will suppress innovation uh, in a similar way that I, I suspect that open source will. And and I, I think these are really critical as we as we look forward to the impacts of policy on innovation increasing that's what where the challenges are I think so I, I hope we can broaden that from from sort of the AI kind of open source and 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 make it broader into other kinds of science as well mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a, an important component to to defend uh, by policymakers or to uh, to augment policies. Roger, Dario, do you have any other comments sorry. or feedback for NCSCS? Yeah, no, sorry, I, I was a mute. Uh, yeah, other comments from uh, any other board members or suggestions? Suresh? Yeah, just a comment. So um, whenever I look at these indicators reports, I think of what sort of opinion piece can come out of it uh, in terms of the National Science Board. So uh, I, I was wondering, because there's been a fair amount of interest and activity in Congress around sort of patenting and changing the rules around that competes act, et cetera, et cetera. Is it possible to mm. use the data that uh, is being collected in this kind of a report and make any recommendations about the efficacy of um, recent changes in law or not? And obviously that's again, not for NCSES, but for the NSB to do. I was curious if um, perhaps the experts had a sense of whether uh, we could, uh, you know, get some some product like that out of this kind of work, which is very useful data. But how can we help policymakers think about whether what they're doing is um, effective, or are there more effective ways for them to do things? So, are you speaking specifically about the impact of changes in patenting um, decisions, and then how that affects subsequent Sorry. patenting? Yeah, sorry, not decisions. I'm talking about laws that have been um, looking at uh, sort of modifying how USPTO does some things or, you know, uh, that kind of sort of legislative changes and what their impact has been. So that's a deep dive um, into patenting and regulation and the impacts of that. And I think that we would have to um, think about that uh, in a subsequent report or a deep dive kind of report, it's a it's a little challenging for me to imagine how it goes into the primary report. But I'm I'm happy to continue thinking about it, and then I might suggest that it is an area where we might work together with the patent office. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I guess the kind of thing I'm saying is either a sidebar that says, "Hey, such and so law was passed, and this is what the impact we saw on." The, the numbers, or um, or maybe not in this report, but an NSB, um, you know, I forget what it's called now. The white papers we put out uh, that uh, that that draw on the data to interpret it and help lawmakers to figure out whether you know there's the other kinds of actions we might be recommending. Can I yeah, just we could do that. What what are you what are you thinking of? What law that took place that I might we might be able to look at in the data. What are you thinking, Suresh? I'll send you the, the link. Great, great. We can look great. at that, yeah. I, I uh, could just add on to Suresh's comment. I had the same. I, I wonder if we can't do the sidebars on the issues that we can't cover because we don't have the data, but ones that are right. of interest and, and important to us in the future, uh, such as the ones I mentioned on on deregulation in pharma. Uh, and, and I wonder if, if if we think they're important enough, if, if there's enough information, then, then look at at how that can uh, uh, impact it. Uh, the trouble here with our reports are that we're two or three years behind, two or three years behind because that's how long it takes to get the data, and right. we're not. And what's important today is policies that Congress has set last year or will set next year, or if this Congress does anything at all, of course. But uh, but but the issues that that are important today, I, I, it's where I think. Where I would back up what Suresh said. I, these are important issues that are that we can't address, but if we recognize them as important in our future, then a sidebar might be might be uh, it might be worthy of a sidebar. Had the same same question about 
about VC data and, and investment data. This is a terrible time right now for investment, for example, in new industry. And, and people are backing up and only backing up their old, their old their their current investments and not looking forward to new innovative areas because they simply don't know where the in, in economy is going. And those kind of fluctuations are important for Congress to recognize to see if there aren't ways that they can, if they want to adjust how they do business. Right. So right. I think that's yeah. interesting to contrast those two things, right? Because venture capital, of course, is market-driven activity and patent policy is regulation. And right. so our patent data will go through 2022. So any regulations that took place after that won't be reflected in our data, but it, we might have that's the opportunity good. to yeah. mention what is coming. And if you would send mm -hmm. us that information, that would be good. The VC data, we can go a little further. So we'll have a report coming out in 2024. We can clearly go through, um, well, probably we could go through mid-2022, though usually we end in 2022. And you will see, Roger, this variation that you're talking about. It's looking like a roller coaster in venture. Thank you. So Julia has her hand up. Uh, yeah, thanks. First of all, um, Carol and team, um, it's great to see the effort to include geographic distribution. Um, that clearly ties in with board priorities, and we really appreciate that. Um, now, sort of playing off of and extending beyond what Dario and Roger have already mentioned, um, patents, as you well know, and as I think we've discussed in this thematic uh, report before, really don't cover all of the invention and innovation that takes place. A tremendous amount of it is in copyrights, it's in the software, which um, open source, which we've already covered. Um, it's in trade secrets. And so at, at a minimum, I think that needs to be acknowledged explicitly in the report. Um, it would be really nice for some thought to be given and inclusion if there's enough to say about it, about what you know, if there's even a wild guess as to what what is, um, you know, what what percentage is covered by patents and what isn't, and where is that disparity the widest, um, you know, what what fields and and so forth, and if there are any data or any potential data or research projects that you might undertake to explore that going forward, I think that's really important um, because I think um, many um, entities are getting more uncomfortable about the patenting versus um, doing other things. So um, I, I, I'm just concerned that focusing on patents is the tip of the iceberg and we're missing a lot. So, so that's probably my most substantive comment. The second thing uh, you had mentioned uh, being more inclusive in the knowledge transfer uh, with regard to uh, university collaborations and so forth. Um, it is dwarfed by what is done with universities, but of course there are government agencies and I know the most about the DOE labs, but there are others as well. And I'm not quite sure from the outline that you gave in the outline um, where that stuff would fit. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, well, as I say, it's relatively small, at least the parts I know about. But um, it, I think it is important to at least look at it and capture it and any trends that there may be over time. All right, so we, we got started a little late and in the interest of time, I wanna make sure we have enough time for a vote. Can all of the SEP members stay on for perhaps another five minutes? If, if, you, if you cannot, please let me know in the chat. Maureen, um, I was just uh, writing in the chat that I need to jump off and if I could record my vote for the yes, if possible, don't want to break quorum or something. Yes. Okay. We will, we will record your vote. Um, Matt had your hand up, uh, but it's down. You, uh, I got to do the same thing. I got to go, but record my vote. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Dario. Uh, to speak Julia? briefly, I can do both of the things that Julia is asking for. Um, mm -hmm. We will include a broader perspective on the protection of intellectual property as we've done in the past based on NCSES survey data, which actually tells us trade secrets are the most important. But again, this issue of open source software, we really do think that this is critical. And this is why we're gonna to continue to put out the data as much as we can, because we agree not everyone is patenting, especially federal labs. Yeah. Um, 
Roger? Uh, just one more comment. Uh, I, I really like the work that's going on, Carol, and your willingness to listen to all these crazy things that we that we suggest. But, but I'm wondering about um, in that in that last section, you indicated um, a mention of uh, oh shucks, I'm getting all over. The, I can't find it now. Uh, of mitigation in agriculture and and for agroforestry. But will that also include a uh, a, a wider discussion of of the innovation that's going on around mitigation, whether it's in carbon capture or or in um, defle reflection, deflection of, of sunlight, things like that, I mean, the, the, because they are climate change related and because climate change is such an important component of our future. And a lot of the science and technology, I suspect, in the next decade is going to be around this space. How are we doing now? Uh, are they, uh, is it leading to innovation or are they, or, I mean, we hear quite a lot of, um, Interesting approaches in in mitigation, and uh, and I, it, it's it's an interesting topic that that uh, will change. And I I think in your side sidebar that could be enlarged beyond just agriculture. Not just. I mean, I'm very pleased it's agriculture and agroforestry. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot more in there as well. So. Uh, thank you, Roger, because we did agriculture and forestry for you. Um, but actually, um, it turns out that there are 10 categories on climate change mitigation, and they um, go from, you know, air quality, soil quality, the oceans. And so once we saw what we had on agriculture and forestry, we said, holy guacamole, we only have a small percent of all the things that are going on on climate change mitigation. And there are 10 categories, and we yeah. actually... We'll look, we are going to look at all 10. Now, I will not promise you that we will give you county level data on all 10, um, but we will be able to get them at the level of USPTO because once we saw what we had, we said, yeah, let's Great. look at the whole thing. Okay, thanks. Fabulous. Um, are there any other questions or comments from the board? Um, I'd like to... Uh, before we close the discussion, uh, see if anyone in the NCSES leadership or on the call would like to add anything to our discussion. I'm, I'm going to take an opportunity again to commend you. I think this is a, I, I really like the changes and I particularly like the, the geography aspects. If, if it's, if it can be done in a reasonable way, it might be interesting to see if we could uh, capture some of the urban rural, um, geography differences on the county level data because uh, there are lots of counties and and having that as a uh, way of kind of lensing the data might be might be helpful to to our friends in Congress. Um, I think else? the maps can show that Maureen right okay I think we can do some I think we can draw I think our chief statistician John Finnamore was going to say if you uh, say something John? So Maureen, the questions that you're raising, the topics that are of interest, that's great to hear. I think the thing that Amy and Carol and her team, um, Amy's team is really doing is looking at what data is out there. What's the fitness for use of those data to inform the policy questions we're trying to explore? So some of the questions that Roger raised, some of the questions that Dario raised, the thing that we're constantly looking at, and this is where I fit in, is whether the data can truly answer those questions. Are yes. the limitations associated with the data? So what we want to hear from the board is, what are the questions you want to answer? And then our job is to really explore what data can be out there, obviously with input from you all in terms of potential data sources, but then whether the data are truly appropriate to inform these important questions. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I think that's an incredibly valuable point. Um, you know, the granularity of the data for some of the questions that Dario raised and that Roger raised uh, over time is going to be really, really important for tracking the impact of policy changes. Uh, or regulatory changes on on these important areas. Um, anyone else? Also, as our discussion draws to a close, I think we're ready for a vote then. Uh, Amanda, do we have a quorum? Given the two votes that have already been logged? Uh, you should call the vote and note that proxies will be registered with if there are no objections from the committee. All right. Um, I'm going to then call for a vote. So um, all in favor of approving the narrative outline, please say, make sure your microscope or your microphones are on <laughs> so we can hear you. Uh, please say aye. 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 Um, all, any opposed? Any abstentions? 
Thank you. I believe the narrative outline has been approved. Uh, thank you again for all of, all of you for your participation today and based on your input uh, that you've provided during this telecon, the SEI team and NCSCS will, will develop the draft reports, which will be distributed to the SEP and to NSB review early next year as part of the external review stage for report development. This will be your second important milestone for oversight and review of the process for the 2024 indicator cycle. Um, I'd like to spend the last few minutes of this meeting asking, uh, when you read this report, uh, were there any outstanding policy questions or relevant policy outreach ideas that jumped out to you? We've heard kind of from Roger a little bit on, on this topic and from Suresh Garamella before he left the call. But if anything is um, really outstanding in your mind as something that we should, we should address with a policy piece, uh, please feel free to uh, email it to me and copy to Amanda and we will, we will bring it up at the SEP meeting before the next board meeting. So thank you again. I think this concludes our business for today uh, and the meeting is adjourned at 1.36 Mountain Time. Thanks so much.